Well, I want to commend my colleague for her extraordinary remarks and her leadership on fighting these issues. It's a privilege to be here in the Senate today to listen to the remarks of all of the Senate women colleagues who care so deeply about women in America and how they are literally being used as a pawn in a debate about the budget. These women have drawn a line in the sand, a line in the sand about we will not let you cross. You may not balance the budget on the backs of women, period. It's very simple. The election last November was not about a mandate for these social issues. It was about the economy. It was about how are we going to create jobs? How do we get a body of representatives to come together, work together across party lines to come up with solutions? That is what the election was about. The American people voted overwhelmingly for a vote and a discussion of issues relating to jobs. How do we create jobs? How do we create the atmosphere and the landscape so our small businesses can grow? But that's not what the House of Representatives is focused on, no. They have created an entire agenda around an assault on women, women's safety nets, women's health care, protections for women and children, early childhood education, prenatal care, pap smears, you name it, this is what they are beginning to focus their attention on. Millions of Americans depend on reproductive services. Millions of women depend on prenatal care, on uh, early cancer screenings, breast exams, all of the types of preventive health care that families rely on. In fact, in New York, there are over 200,000 New Yorkers that rely on this pre preventive care. For my friends and colleagues, this is a factual statement. Current law already prevents federal money from paying for abortions. This has been the law of the land for over 30 years. Shutting down the government to fight a political argument is not only outrageous, it is irresponsible. The price for keeping the government open is this assault on women's rights, equality, access to health care, access to preventive care. Women shoulder the worst of health care costs, including outrageous discriminatory practices that we work so hard during health care reform to fix. The National Women's Law Center tells us that under the previous health care system, a 25-year-old woman would have to pay 45% more just to get basic health care than a male her same age. Some of the most essential services required by women for their basic health were not covered by many insurance plans, like prenatal care, pap smears or mammograms, or preventive screenings, including postpartum depression, domestic violence, and family planning. The institutionalized discrimination in our health care system is wrong, and it's a tax on women and their families. What we did in health care reform was to begin to address these issues, to make sure that the inadequacies of, uh, inadequacies of our current system could be addressed, safeguarding women's health, and making sure that this institutional discrimination no longer exists. Yesterday was equal pay day. Women all across America earn 78 cents for every dollar their male colleague earns who's doing the exact same job. Yesterday was the day it would take a woman to work all last year and this year to earn exactly what that male colleague earned. Well, who does that affect? It affects families. It affects every family in America that has a working mother who's bringing money home to pay for her children, for her family, for their well-being. So when we should be talking about the economy and issues about how do we have equal pay in this country, the Republican House is talking about how to continue this rhetoric and assault and negative effects on women and their families and what they need to protect themselves. The votes that we're going to have tomorrow to defund Planned Parenthood, to repeal health care, American women, make no mistake about it, this is an attack on you. It's an attack on every preventive health service, every safety net, everything that you care about whether it's early childhood education, whether it's pap smears, whether it's mammograms, whether it's prenatal care when you're pregnant. That is, what they're, that is what their efforts are all about. And you should just know that you have women of the Senate who will stand by you. We have drawn this, la this line in the sand and we will not allow them to cross it. We are your voice in Washington. We are your voice in Congress. And we will protect you and the basic safety nets and equality that you should, you should expect out of the U.S. government.